Hello, everyone. Really excited to be here with you today. Um, if I do my job well today, I'll be able to give you a better perspective on how Credit Karma operates and some of the plans uh, that we have against our execution. So to start, because we are the newest uh, segment within Credit Karma, I thought we'd anchor around the business metrics and give you some context of how we performed over the course of the last three years. Um, so first, you know, we're really excited and proud about the fact that we've been able to drive a revenue roughly 58% year over a year at $1.8 billion. And to double click into that, it's really driven by three important effects. First is the COVID uncertainty aspect of the business. When times are rough, consumers turn to Credit Karma, they engage more, and they look for financial advice. And that's one key aspect of what we've seen over the course of the last couple of years. Next is really our product differentiation, right? Our ability to innovate in the space. And Lightbox is one of those hallmarks that we have leveraged. You know, we have seen our Lightbox adoption rate at 70%. We have seen more partners uh, increase the volume that uh, they have uh, used Lightbox. And third and foremost is we continue to expand our overall business. What was historically focused on credit cards and personal loans, we've been able to expand into new areas like auto loans, home equity, and even money. And we're happy to report that over the last couple of years, we've seen those growth verticals more than double. Now, with that as context, I really want to talk about the member problem, because I think this is the piece that is most important. This is how we think about building the business each and every day, which is a focus on helping our members solve the core problems that they see. And the reality is that consumers are very confused, and they're frustrated about how the, you know, the financial services system works. Most consumers are having problems making ends meet. Most consumers don't have even $1,000 in savings, right? And when you think about that, that is one car accident, that is one unforeseen trip to the medical uh, emergency room that really sets consumers back. And the, you know, the reason why all this happens is because the financial services system is highly fragmented, it's very complex, and consumers just don't understand how to navigate it. And with that is, uh, as context, you know, our vision is to change that complexity. Our vision is to change the world where consumers actually understand their finances and actually are able to make ends meet. And this is a vision and a mission that is very dear to me because if you go back to that prior slide, it's my family, a lot of those sats, and that, you know, it, it's what I have lived. And, you know, that makes it, that makes it significant, it makes it personal. And I would say that you know, our goal here is three-throng. First is we want to help consumers understand their overall picture. The challenge in this space is that all the data is fragmented. You have to go to one particular credit card company. They don't know anything about your savings account. They have no idea what you're doing from an auto insurance perspective. We can combine all of that data into one platform. Now, with that data, we can help our members make smart money financial decisions, right? You know, I always like to say uh, finances is just math and data, and computers are very good at solving those problems with enough data, with enough of the right algorithms, and we believe we have all of those things within the Credit Karma platform. And then lastly, through automation, we think that we can help our members stick with the plan that is created. We believe we can help them make financial progress by automating some of the most tedious tasks and making sure that they get to focus on what is really important to them, and whether that is buying a home, whether it's a college uh, education, whether it's saving for a vacation, it doesn't really matter. We can simplify that process so that our members can achieve the goals that they have. Now, when I talk about the ecosystem of Credit Karma, it's important to note that there are many factors in the space, right? First is we have the consumer aspect of it, which we wouldn't exist if we didn't have this. But along with that, we've connected all the various data points that are really necessary for financial services companies to make decisions on underwriting, on credit lines, on whom to approve, right? So we get proprietary information from the credit bureaus, information around income from TurboTax and um, payroll, uh, and a lot of other data that really drives uh, engagement and drives stickiness. So with that, we build products that consumers look at time and time again. So for example, your ability to mon our ability to monitor the consumer's credit score, the changes in credit reports, um, real-time inquiries, right? That drives a strong engagement loop. What's also important to note is that we have a direct relationship with each and every one of our members. So rather than being a data broker that is selling data without the awareness of the consumer, without permission, we have a first party relationship with each and every one of our members. They have consented to giving us their information, and we are, in turn, 
are creating value from that information and insights for them, and actually giving them a look at what the financial services companies get to see from an underwriting and backend perspective. And then lastly, we continue to innovate and integrate with some of the largest financial services companies in the world. So we have unique APIs with several banks and financial institutions that allow us to do things like Lightbox, allow us to do things like get loans faster into the hands of our members. Now, with that as a platform, you might say, well, what's differentiator, what's unique? Can't anyone replicate it? And I would just note that there are several important aspects of the business that we have built over the course of the last 15 years. First is scale, right? Banks really care about scale. Our ability to drive large customers to make real innovation, and that matters. And with 129 million members on the Credit Karma platform, we have that. Next is really this idea of trust and innovation, or yeah, tr trust and engagement. You know, we continue to see our members, uh, you know, think about Credit Karma in times of crisis, in times of uncertainty. What we're driving is this ability for consumers to really get a sense of which products they're qualified for and how to move forward in their financial life, and that has always been an important aspect of what we do. Now, and then, you know, when you think about the data capabilities and all the information that we have on our platform, it's quite immense, right? Uh, what is happening in this space is more data is being used in every aspect of financial services, and we get to see all that on the Credit Karma platform, and that is also unique. So we have over 55,000 data points on our members that, again, that banks oftentimes are using to determine eligibility and the right marketing and targeting aspects of what they do. So, you know, for this, this is, this is an important aspect. It's, it's a uniqueness that no one else in this space has and a uniqueness that is very challenging to replicate. So next, let me talk a little bit about Lightbox, right? Let me double click into that. So this is one instance of how we take all of that information and create a project for it. So Lightbox is our enterprise solution for large banks and, and consumers. And if you understand it, you know, 30, 40 years ago, uh, underwriting was very simple. You'd take a credit score, 699, you're declined, 700, you're approved. Well, today, it's a lot more complicated than that, right? Today, it's thousands of variables, it's big data, it's machine learning. And really, the complexity of it is no consumer could really understand whether or not they're really qualified for that product. So what we have done with our Lightbox platform is we've basically replicated that logic, that ability, all within our platform. So members who are on our site can see what products they're qualified for before they apply. And that's really important because one of the challenges in the space and consumer problem is that if you don't know what products you're qualified for, how do you actually compare, right? And that process is why consumers continue to be stuck um, in, in terms of not making headway. So why does this work well for us? Well, for consumers, you know, Lightbox, it creates that certainty. It creates that aspect of knowing that the products that you see, you'll be qualified for. For our partners, our banking institutions, well, it's important because we're able to elevate the quality of consumers that they're getting, right? So if you think about it, declining a customer is not good for anybody. It is bad for your NPS. It's bad from a cost perspective of the data that you have to buy. It's bad for the customer service reps that you have to use to answer the phone when somebody is inevitably angry with you. Um, so what we are able to create is a win-win-win situation where consumers are able to get the highest quality certainty offers on our platform. Our partners are able to uh, drive the ideal target customer for them. And Credit Karma is a technology platform that drives all of it, right? And our model is we get paid when a consumer is matched with the right product. And when I say matched, I mean approved. So we really align our interest with that of the consumer. Now, looking forward, I'm going to talk a little bit about our strategy, right? We have three components of this. First is we really want to continue to grow our core business, which is credit cards and personal loans. And we think we, that, you know, Lightbox is really our strategic differentiator in that. Next is this idea of growing our growth verticals or expanding our growth verticals in the form of um, auto insurance, auto loans, home equity, mortgages. And then third is we want to bring the ecosystem together by making sure that we're developing our emerging verticals, which is our money component. So let me do a double click into this and walk you through a couple examples of how we think about each one of these particular verticals. So first is, you know, as I've talked a little bit about uh, Lightbox, well, there's an aspect of it. That is the enterprise solution. So we're bringing that now to the forefront with the consumer solution, which is we are so sure that you will be approved for particular offers, we're now launching Karma Guaranteed, which is us putting our money where our mouth is. If you're not approved for that product, Credit Karma specifically, 
will pay the consumer uh, you know, $50. Uh, and this is really important in context to consumers who don't know and don't have a lot of certainty of what products are qualified for. So in August of 2022, we had over 80,000 transactions within the Karma Guaranteed platform. Next is this idea of uh, easy apply. So if you really think about the credit application, it's oftentimes tedious, it's oftentimes complicated. Well, the good news is Credit Karma with our 55,000 data points we can actually pre-fill that application on a consumer's behalf. And this is actually more important as things become more mobile, as uh, application forms get more complicated. And the good news here is our early test results show us a 20% increase when we use the Easy Apply platform. So simple examples of how the data, the consumer, and then the integrations with the banks are really making progress from both a business perspective, but most importantly, from a consumer perspective. Next, I want to talk about our growth verticals and a couple of important examples here. So when you think about what is involved in a mortgage, for example, well, you realize it's a lot of data collection, a lot of paper collection, right? A loan consultant is calling you for your W-2. They're sure checking to make sure your credit qualified. They're making sure that you have your banking statements. And here, we have all that information. So an example of us bringing all of this to life is our, our pre-approval letters, right, which allow us to give you a pre-approved mortgage letter with just a few simple clicks versus all the other work that's historically happened in this space. Um, we're excited because that actually drives a 60% increase in conversion when we're able to send and deliver that pre-approval letter. Um, let me talk a little bit about Karma Drive. You might have seen some of the examples upstairs. In addition to all the things that we're doing in financial services around loans and mortgages, we're also innovating on the auto insurance front. Something like $21 million of overpayment is uh, happening each and every year in the auto insurance space because people are underwritten based on credit, their age, but not necessarily how they drive. So we're going to where the puck is going to be by using telematics and usage-based insurance so that consumers will actually get discounts based on how they drive. And we're happy to announce that you know, we have 2.3 million enrollments in the space. We have over 204 million trips and nearly 2 billion miles. And when a consumer gets a discount uh, via Karma Drive, they're on average able to save roughly $300 in this space. And lastly, I want to talk a little bit about Credit Karma money. So this is really our emerging vertical. This is important for us for a couple of reasons. First is that when you think about Gen Z, this is an opportunity because not everyone has a credit score. And really, the next generation of consumers are thinking about money in a completely different framework than you and I. And I think there is an opportunity for, here, uh, for us here to, one, drive more engagement, but two, make sure that we actually are at the forefront of digital innovation when it comes to the wallet and how consumers are thinking about money. In that context, we are thinking about faster access to money really is important. Our ability to help consumers uh, you know, build their credit is another really important aspect of Credit Karma money. Let me double click on that. right? Our credit builder product, which you might heard of, have heard about upstairs, is really transformational. Historically, building credit is really challenging. And that's really where Credit Karma grew up in understanding that nuance. So we are able to help consumers build credit by simply putting $20 away each and every month. And what we have seen in our early days and early success is that you know, scores are improving roughly 21 points over the course of 30 days. And that might not seem a lot to the people in this audience, but for a consumer who does have access to the credit, that is a start, that is a foundation, and that's how we continue to build trust. Next, let me talk a little bit about the ecosystem itself. Uh, while Kim asked not for a lot of questions, I got a lot of questions about, hey, how is the Intuit ecosystem power in credit card? And I'll talk about it in four flavors, right? First is this notion that um, we are able to drive more consumers to TurboTax. And in fiscal year 22, we were able to do an instant, um, um, instant refund calculator. And with that, we saw over 700,000 engagements. And when, we, when people engage in that particular front, they're 70% more likely to leverage TurboTax in their returns. Next is that there's a really big opportunity for Credit Karma to grow via the large Intuit customer base. Uh, in fiscal year 22, 25% of the customers on Credit Karma were originated or created via that opportunity. Third, the integration with uh, Credit Karma money and TurboTax. Each and every year, 113 roughly billion dollars of refunds are created uh, through the TurboTax platform. 
And here, in just last year, we were able to drive over $3 billion of uh, refunds into the Credit Karma Money product. We are able to drive over half of our Credit Karma Money acquisitions through that integration. And then lastly, we're just starting to scratch the surface when you think about the QuickBooks payroll, right? There's $200 billion worth of payroll that goes through that system each and every year. And what we know is that Credit Karma Money the challenge in that space is getting money into the system. Consumers have no problem getting money out of that system. And when we're able to connect all of these pieces together, we're able to create a synergy and an opportunity that drives more engagement and more trust with our platform. So in closing, I would note that our, our long-term growth expectations are 20 to 25%. They're really driven on three key important pieces, right? One, oh, I'm on the wrong slide. Sorry about that. Um, let me talk quickly about the TAM piece, which is, you know, as, as you look at this space, what we see is that when you look at the core business, there's roughly $17 billion worth of TAM. We see, by the way, every transaction or every origination in the mortgage space. So we're able to drive 7% 7, um, uh, 7 of all transactions today. When you look at our growth verticals, which is um, auto insurance, auto loans, uh, mortgages, uh, we're less than 1% share of wallet and share of transactions today. And then when you look at our overall emerging verticals, we're roughly $32 billion of opportunity in that space. So long term, um, we expect to see 20 to 25% growth in the business. We see it driven in three core components. One is more member growth. Two is going to be our ability to increase the engagement of our overall user base. And then third is our ability to increase the monetization of that user over the long term. And what I would close with is that you know, the challenges that we see in financial services and consumers specifically isn't new, but the platform that we have created will bring about innovation and opportunity for us to change the way that people think about money, bringing new solutions and a way for people to actually make progress. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Michelle.